In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can create this timer in Swift UI, and it's highly customizable, so you can create it in any kind of style you like, and it's going to be quite simple. You have a slider, and you can select the amount of time that you want it to go for, and we're just going to put it at one minute for this demonstration. And once you click on start, you're not allowed to change the slider. It's going to disable it. It's going to disable the start button. And you can also reset it at any moment you like. So if you click on reset, it's going to set it back to the minute that we initially had. So we can also go ahead and do it on seven. We can start it and it's going to animate it. So it's slowly going to put the slider down to zero as time progresses. And when you click on reset, it's going to put it back to its initial position. Now, when it reaches zero, it's going to trigger an alert and it's going to get stuck at zero. So let's go ahead and wait a minute for this to happen. So as the timer gets closer to zero, it's going to arrive at zero and it's going to say timer done. So if we go ahead and click on continue, it's going to go to zero. We can go ahead and click on reset and it'll take us back to one minute, which is the minimum we have over here. And yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to be making in this video. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get started with a new empty Xcode project. And we're going to be creating a view model for this because it's going to make this so much more manageable. We already have a lot we have to write in the UI. So let's go ahead and create a new file. So hold command plus N and create a new Swift file and it's going to be called content view model. Now we can close the sidebar while we're working on this, but the first thing we have to do is create an extension on our content view. We only want this view model to be available in the content view. Up next, let's go ahead and create a final class so it doesn't get inherited by anything by accident. And it's going to be called view model, which is going to conform to the observable object protocol. Then we need to create a bunch of at published variables. So the first one we need to create is is active, which will be set initially to false, and that will determine whether our timer is being used or not. Then we need to go ahead and type in at published var showing alert, which of course tells us whether we're showing an alert or not. Then at published var time, which is going to be of type string, and we're just going to set the initial value to five minutes. So this is the display time. It's what we will show in the timer. Then we need to go ahead and type in at published var minutes, which will be the user selected minutes. And it's going to be of type float, which will equal 5.0 initially. And we need to add some special functionality to this because when the user changes this, we want to update the time string immediately. So here we're going to go ahead and type in did set. So every time this does get set, we're going to call self.time and we're going to provide the integer value of the minutes and we need to go ahead and add zero zero right after that. Then we have to create these local variables. One is the private var initial time, which will be set to zero and the private var end date, which will be set to the current date. And these are going to be updated to keep track of the current time of our app. So the very first thing we want to create in here is a start function. So this will start the timer with the given minutes and the minutes will be provided as a float because we want to select it from the slider and the slider requires a float. So self dot initial time is going to be set to the int of the minutes and this is the time we want. Then we need to go ahead and provide the end date, which will be the date of the time that we start this because we're going to add some time to this date. So if we get the date of now, we're just going to go ahead and add five minutes to it, for example. So self dot is active is going to be set to true because we have started the timer. And finally, self dot end date is going to equal calendar dot current dot date by adding and we want to add the minute of the int of minutes. And that's going to be added to the end date. And we need to assert that this will never be nil. So right here, we're saying that we want to add minutes, which means if you want to get even more specific, you can go ahead and change this to second, or you can change this to hour, that's up to you. And we're using this value to be added to the calendar. So it's going to add the amount of minutes that we select to this current end date, which means it's just going to 
get our initial start date and it's going to subtract it from the end date and that's how we're going to calculate the remaining time. And that will take care of the start function. Then we need to go ahead and create a reset function which will take care of resetting the application to the initial state. So self.minutes is going to equal the float of the initial time. Then we can go ahead and type in self is active and set that to false because it is no longer being run and the self.time is going to equal exactly this string up here from the minutes publisher. So we can just go ahead and copy that and paste it inside there. Now these functions are great. They help us with updating the timer, but now we need to go ahead and create a function that actually updates the published values and formats it because the values we're going to get back are going to be in seconds or as a raw date format. So we need to format that so the user can read it with ease. So function update countdown. And inside here, the first thing we want to make sure is that is active is set to true or else it doesn't make sense. We don't really have to update anything. So we'll just return out of it. Now we need to go ahead and get the current date, which is just going to be a date. And we need to get the difference from the dates. So first we want to get the difference from the end date, the time interval since 1970, which is going to return to us a long amount of seconds. And that's going to be deducted from now dot time interval since 1970. So that's the difference that's calculated. And that's the remaining time between now and the date we've selected which is going to be three minutes in the future, 10 minutes in the future, or as far in the future as you decide. Now, if the difference is less than or equal to zero, that means the countdown is over. So we're going to go ahead and type in self is active and set that to false. And the self.time is going to be set to 0, 0.00 and self.showingAlert is going to equal true. So we can show that alert at the end of the counter. And then we need to return out of the statement because we do not need to provide any further processing. So in case you want to add some pop-up notifications, this is the place you would do it because this shows you that the time is done. So you can go ahead and add some local notifications and tell the user that the timer is done. But now we need to go ahead and make sure we can turn this difference into some sensible data. So to do this, we need to go ahead and first create another date, which is going to equal a date of the time interval since 1970. And that's going to be the difference. Then we're going to let the calendar equal a calendar.current so we can grab the components from the calendar. Let minutes equal calendar.component and we want to grab the minutes from the date. It's going to be very similar to get the seconds or the hour. You just need to copy this line, paste it under and we need to change this to seconds and change the minutes to seconds from the date. So these are the components we need to create our string. Now we can go ahead and type in self.minutes is going to equal the float of minutes. And this will allow us to keep track of the remaining minutes so we can create our countdown slider and actively show the user that the slider is getting smaller. Then we need to go ahead and assign to self dot time, which is a string. And here we're going to type in string and we want to format. And here we will provide the following format. Since it is a date, we need to do percent date double dot percent zero two D for two decimal places. And what we want to format are these arguments, the minutes and the seconds. And this is going to put these two inside here. And that will take care of the functionality of the timer. Now it's important we actually go ahead and see how we can use this stuff in the UI. So go ahead and open your sidebar and click on content view. Then we can close the sidebar and resume with our application just to make sure that everything's working correctly. So if your application loads, good job, you've copied correctly. Now we can move on to actually putting it inside the content view. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create a state object, which is going to be a private var of view model. And that's going to equal the view model we've created. Then we want to go ahead and create private let timer, which is going to equal a timer dot publish every one second on the main thread in common. 
and we need to remember to call auto connect or else this will not start. And the timer is going to be used to update the UI every one second. And again, it's important we use dates to accurately end the timer because this will try to run every second, but it's not going to be guaranteed that it will actually run every second. It might run every one and a half seconds. It might run every 0.90 seconds. It's going to be inaccurate. So that's why we have a date instead of just counting with the timer. Now let's go ahead and type in private let width. And that's going to be a double of 250. And we're going to use that for the UI. So we don't have to type that everywhere. Now, the first thing we have to do is create a V stack. So go ahead and type in V stack. And we're going to create an on receive here. And that's the first thing we want to get out of the way. We want to make sure that we can update this every second. So we call on receive and on receive of the timer, we're going to perform the following. So we need to get rid of perform and open a closure. So underscore in, and we're going to go ahead and type in VM dot update countdown. So that's going to happen every second. Next, we can go ahead and create a text and the text is going to have the backslash VM dot time. And here we can style it however we like. We can go ahead and give it a font of dot system, size, weight and design. And for this, I just added 70 followed by dot medium and the font design is going to be rounded. Then I wanted to add an alert to it. So dot alert. And here we're going to type in timer done exclamation mark and is presented is going to be set to the binding value of VM showing alert and the actions we need to, of course, give it some actions. So open up a closure and inside here, add the button that will just say whatever you wanted to say. It's going to say continue with a rule of dot cancel and add your own functionality in here. Next to this text view, I still want to add some features such as some padding and a frame with the width set to width and the rest doesn't matter. So we can delete that and actually change this effectively to width. Then we want to go ahead and give it a background of dot thin material, thin material, please. And a corner radius of 20 with an overlay of a rounded rectangle that has a corner radius of 20 and a stroke of caller dot gray with a line width set to four. So that is the text UI. Right below the text view, we can go ahead and create the slider. So here we'll type in slider and it's going to have a value of dollar sign VM dot minutes and that's what we will be affecting with the slider and we need to make sure there's a range there so in and we're going to put one to ten because if we add zero the user is going to have a timer that ends instantly and you're free to add that if you want but i don't want to do that and we're going to add step one because we only want them to be able to select minutes then we're going to go ahead and add a padding so it's not so close to the screen edges and it needs a frame with the width of width. And again, the rest you can just take away. We don't need that. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and add dot disabled. And that's going to be set to VM dot is active. So if the timer is active, it's going to be disabled. If the timer is inactive, we're going to freely be able to use it. And I also wanted to add an animation to it, which is dot ease in ease out. And it's going to have a value of VM dot minutes. So every time the minutes change, it's going to smoothly animate the slider down a step. Now, finally, the last thing we have to do is create an H stack. And inside this H stack, we need to give it a spacing of 50. So first we want to go ahead and create a button that says start, which will take care of starting the timer. And here we go ahead and open the closure. We'll type in VM dot start with the minutes of VM dot minutes. And this button will be disabled based on whether the timer is active. So VM is active. Otherwise below it, we want to create a button, which is going to say reset, which is a destructive action. And the action is going to be set to VM dot reset. And the tint is going to be set to dot red. So we can show the user it is a destructive action. Now we're also going to go ahead and just make sure that the frame for this 
is set to the width of the width. So we can make sure everything is aligned to the timer. And as you can see, we've actually effectively created a very simple timer app with very few lines of code. And let's go ahead and run it just to make sure that everything's working correctly. And as soon as you run the application, you'll notice that you can change the timer just by dragging the slider left and right. If we click on start, the timer is going to start and it's going to calculate one minute from now, which means even if you close this app, it's going to continuously count down and you can go ahead and open it up once again and it's going to continue counting. Of course, we didn't add any data persistence, so you can't close the app entirely, but if you wanted to, it's going to work because we have a future date set. You just need to save the future date and it will continuously count towards that date. But now in about two seconds, we're going to get an alert that says the timer is finished. And once again, you can go ahead and add a local notification if you want to. It can tell the user something's done, the time is over, whatever you want. But that was the basics regarding how you can create your own simple timer for any application you like. And as you can see, you can even put 10 minutes and you can even go further than that. And it's going to format it nicely. And I believe that actually covers everything I wanted to go over in today's lesson. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.